So you have your normal standard ways of getting a tenant, but there are other methods. And in this video, we give you five unusual ways you can attract your dream tenant. Okay, so first up, we've got Gumtree. Now, Gumtree is a major listing site. You can pretty much list anything there. And most people just see it as a general listing site and don't really think about it from a property point of view. But you're missing out because we tested Gumtree because you can list properties for let on the site. And we tested it out nationally and we were really interested by the results. So we found that certain areas respond really, really well to Gumtree and others not so well, but we still use it anyway, just in case. But why should you take notice? Well, you can actually list for free in most cases and even the premium adverts are really reasonable. So if you're using right move and supla why not just extend that further and try gumtree because if it doesn't cost a lot or it's even free then why not do it test it for your area and see what the results are like we've tested in multiple areas so we've got a good read on different different places and as i say it's not a guaranteed win everywhere but for the price of it it's certainly worth testing yeah, it's well worth a try. You've already got the photos, you've already got the description, so why not take a minute and just whack it up there? I've got a feeling that even if you pay, it's only about 20 quid. So definitely worth a try and see what results you get. Okay, second way to find the perfect tenant, foreign tenant networks. So as you'll know, there are many parts of the UK where there are strong communities of foreign nationals. So Lincoln is one example of that, and you'll probably be able to think of others near you as well. Now, it's no surprise that these communities have very strong links, they talk to each other, and that means that if you let one property to an overseas tenant and you treat them well, then often you'll find that they tell their friends and you get other properties let for you as well. We've seen this happen a lot and it makes sense. So of course, sometimes this happens naturally. An overseas tenant happens to move into one of your properties. You treat them well because that's what you always do. And then they start asking you, oh, well, have you got any other properties? Because I've got other people who are looking to move and all that kind of thing. But then there are some things that you can do as well to specifically tap into these networks. So for example, I know a couple of people actually who've got members of staff on their teams who've got links with these already because that gives them a unique advantage. It means that they can serve these communities more easily and give them what they need. And this also works particularly well for HMOs. And that, of course, that's even more important because you've got lots of rooms that you're trying to fill and slightly higher turnover. So that can be really useful. So you're not necessarily going to want to go as far as like you know, taking somebody on and employing somebody who's got these links, but just something to think about. See if there are any ways you can tap into these networks. If you've got any friends who might have these connections, see if they can put the word out for you. Another approach you can try that we found some success with is Facebook groups. So yes, the world's biggest social media platform has uses outside of videos of cats. Yes, Facebook can be a productive tool for property investors. There are many Facebook groups whose sole purpose is connecting a local community or area, and even some that are specifically for property in your local area. Start searching. The search function on Facebook is quite good. Start searching the areas where your property is listed and see if there are just general groups about that community or area, or even better, property groups. Now, a word of warning, don't just go in and start spamming. Understand if there's any rules or etiquette that that particular group has, because some of them are very strict on what you can and can't do. But if you treat it in a respectful way and follow any rules that that particular group may have, you can benefit from that ready-made group in the community that you're targeting. Also, if you've got a virtual assistant, perfect task for them to be doing as well as the posting there's lots of following up people will message you if you can get someone else to do that then it's even bigger of a win okay let's move on to another way dead simple referring a friend this is amazingly basic but it works so if you've got a number of properties in one area and one of them becomes free then ask your current tenants in your other properties if they've got a friend who's looking to move it's so obvious but the reason it works is that again if you're providing a good service and they're happy then they will want to recommend you to a friend because it'll make them look good that is why people do it. Because if they can say to their friend, oh yeah, my landlord's got another place and he's really good and treats me well, um, then their friend is grateful to them. They get to feel good about themselves. Now you do still need to ask because of course they're not necessarily gonna know if you've got another property empty. They won't necessarily think of it, but if you say, 
have you got any friends who'd be interested? Then it gets them thinking and they go, oh yeah, I know so-and-so. So all you have to do is give it a tiny push to get it going and you never know, it could be the easiest let that you ever have. And another one that works is major local employers. So you should only be investing where there are areas of major employers because that helps increase your tenant demand, increases the potential for capital growth in the future. It's one of the key fundamentals that you should look for. So you've made a conscious choice to invest in one of these areas. Why not go straight to the source for tenants? If we have a number of properties in a block, which does happen, what we will do is we will contact major employers in the area and attempt to get on their bulletin boards or listed on their intranet, whatever they have, we will push to get it listed. The surprising thing is, is the success rate we have of getting listed with them because nobody seems to ask. So we found great success with local airports. We found success with factories. And we found it really easy to get listed with them and then start to bring tenant inquiries in. So maybe we saved the best to last there, but if you're prepared to put the effort in on that particular strategy, you're operating in a market that nearly nobody else bothers to try. Yeah, absolutely. And to wrap up, that really goes for pretty much all of these. Most people won't bother to do these. Therefore, if you are willing to put in the effort, then you can reap the rewards. Give it a try. Even if you add them all together, it doesn't take up that much time. But still, most people won't do it, either because they don't have the time or because they're not motivated enough. They'd rather just let the property sit there on the portal for another few weeks until someone takes it or cut the rent instead of being more proactive. If you do a couple of these, you will find tenants more quickly. And with a couple of these, because of the network effect, you will then find future tenants more quickly as well. So yes, it's a bit more work, but finding the right tenants is pretty fundamental to property investment when you think about it. So it's worth giving it a go. Pick one, try it out. Let us know how you get on. Hopefully you got lots out of this video. Let's keep that learning going. And the best way to do that is to not just subscribe to this channel, but also subscribe to the Property Podcast whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search Property Podcast and we'll be there.